Hey everyone, Nigel here again. Um, going to talk to you today about uh, Lancaster tailplanes. These things. These things here. One of my subscribers, I'm not going to claim this to be my own uh, discovery, but it's a very, very um, sharp-eyed catch. Um, there's a problem with the tailplanes on this kit. And if you care about the accuracy, quality, overall appearance of your model, you're going to want to do this little modification. If not, don't worry about it. Please don't tell me I'm a rivet counter. I'm not. I'm just uh, just conveying what somebody's pointed out to me, and I certainly don't like it. So if we look in the instructions here, we've got the tail of, uh, tailplane assemblies here. So this will be the, what's this? This is the starboard side. Um, and then when we go over the page, over here we've got the port side. So let's just concentrate on the starboard side initially. So we look here, it says part D1 and D3 goes together with these pieces sandwiches in between. I've got those here. Uh, D1 and D3, put those together. Yep, so there's one and D number three. I mark marked them as I took them off the sprues. So they go together there beautifully. Lovely fit. Really is a very nice fit. Well done, HK. Um, not a lot of work there. I'm not sure if any details required down here. I'm not sure what would have been there. I'll have to watch the um, Just Jane restoration videos on YouTube. They're great for stuff like that. Um, I also noticed on that Just Chain, the, the, uh, the um, elevator is actually, they don't pivot like this, they sort of pivot like that, so that when they do go up, say there's loads of, um, loads of this exposed, so it's worth getting that right. So there's those pair, that's great, and then we turn over the page, and it will tell us that on the port side, to put numbers, here we go, where is it, two and four together, to give us that one. So we get number two, number four. Put them together, and there we got lovely, lovely pair of uh, lovely pair of um, horizontal stabilizers, tailplanes, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to call them tailplanes. So there we go. We've got those pair now glued all together, and we put them on the aircraft bump. But there's a problem. If you look at the surface detail on this one, this is the surface detail of the lower wing. Of the lower surface with all the inspection panels and adjustment panels or whatever but then we look at the top side of this one and it's the same so lower surface lower surface huh. look at this one this is the port side so we've got upper surface which is correct for just the one panel in it and upper surface no this is the lower oh so the way the instructions have got you to build in the kit You've got one upper surface and one upper surface and one lower surface and one lower surface. So what you need to do is just simply swap them over. So you've got one lower surface and one upper surface. But unfortunately, oh, you get no pins for assembly. And then here we've got two pins. And because they've got the pegs and the holes inside, as you can see here, you can't just do it. So here we've got the correct detail for the starboard side. So we've got upper surface detail there, lower surface detail there, and then port side, upper surface, lower surface. But this side's got the pins in the way of each other, so they need to be cut off. And then we need to, you know, assemble it with a bit of care. It's no problem not having location pins. That's no issue at all. I often cut them off anyway. And then on this side, We've got the two pins there. These are four mil. Um, you could use four mil stock to replace them. You could actually even use these pins to replace them. But if you look through most kits, a lot of sprues um, will be standard sizes. So this is, I don't know what this is off. I think this is trumpeter. Um, there's a four mil sprue there. Uh, that's four and a half mil. So if you've got a lathe and you want to turn it down, then you can. Or indeed, you can use some. If you've got some, you can use some four mil plastic rod. Um, but generally, I think you'll find sprues are a sort of standard three mil, four mil, two and a half mil, five mil size. Um, they wouldn't have had special tooling made just to put sprue just to put sprues into a tool. So I'll get these instructions out of the way. 
and we'll look about how I'm going to look at correcting this and, and getting it right. Right, so on the bench now we've got our halves here, incorrect halves together, and I just want to show you, um, doesn't really matter which side I use because they're wrong anyway, but uh, the way the fuselage goes, you've got this cut out here, and then you've got this slug on the front of the tailplane there, and the fit is actually very nice, it just pushes in like that. So you've actually got the location of the recess anyway, even if you don't have those um, lugs. So, you know, there are a couple of ways of doing this. You could just um, hack the pins off, you know, put them together, hack these pins off, and then have one side with nothing at all, and just assemble them into the fuselage like so. Obviously I can't put them together properly because I've still got the pins in place but you could just put them in like like so with no um, with no location at all but you haven't got the um, the positive location. I think this may have been designed so you can take them off for storage because uh, they are a pretty snug fit. <clears throat> so um, right what was I initially talking about was using some dowel. So <coughs> Excuse me, we've got our four millimeter um, sprue here. So what we could do is glue some sprue into one of these like so um, and then put that together. Let's just cut a piece of this off. You could just put these together like so and then if the pegs were in the way and then put the piece of sprue in, have it all glued up lovely job done but you also then have the problem of getting them this way correct this way correct so you know you have the job then to square everything up so what I've had is a second idea these pins are in the center these um, halves are equal about and the pins are four mil diameter so therefore this center line must be two millimeters away from this face so if you draw a line across across these pins, that distance in there, the gap will be two millimetres. So if I take two strips of plastic strip, two millimetres thick, and lay them on my flat table, like that, now those pins are resting on the table. And I know that the centre line of that part is parallel to my flat surface, to my workbench. Okay? I also, if I actually square this up on this line here, I then know that they are in the correct orientation according to that line. Now the other thing I can do then is take the other side, which is this one, put some 2mm strips for it and put that down and move that across and then I know I've got the correct squareness and everything on them. But if you see, what's going to happen there is it's going to reach that one and not that one. So how are we going to come about this? So what we need to do is we need to make sure that these pins are in the correct orientation to this rear face. Otherwise, if I just did this, you can see that those pins would be coming out of this part that way round. So what my plan is, and I'll do this now for you step by step, I'm not going to do it live on camera. What my plan is, I've cut some plastic card, and what I'm going to do is put this piece of plastic card in here, glue that in, that's a backing. Then with this clamp down held in place, I'm going to put this down, push it up against that pin with the trailing edge square on that line, glue that pin to there and then cut that pin off of here. And then what I can do is clean that out, make sure the pin goes inside and then do the same on the front one. And then what I'll be left with is a couple of scallops in here I'll have to remove. So. That, I think, is the best way of going about it to make sure that you've got the pins square this way, square that way, and everything's just going to slot together nicely. So I'll get on and glue this piece here and then I'll show you what I do next. 
Right, so that's glued in now. Um, I've glued in both of them just for getting it um, done quicker. On the subject of getting it done quicker, I'm using Tamiya Extra Thin Quick Setting. Very, very hot glue, very, very quick drying, very, very smelly, very, very awesome. Great stuff. Um, but you know how you can, like with Tamiya Extra Thin, say you're gluing a pair of fuselage halves together, you can touch it on and it'll capillary down. It'll do that, but it will leave a mark where you touch. So if you've got one of these, you know, kits with really fine surface detail, stay away from this on the surface because it will destroy it. It is very, very hot. Um, but as I say, it's, I mean, I glued this on uh, literally three minutes later, I'm rubbing it down to get it, you know, to get it smooth on there. So what we can do now is place this wing half on here and make sure we're clear of the lugs and everything on our two mil strips. Place, oh, I've also, what I've done, I've sanded an angle on here because when they go together, you've got this um, angle on there. So I've just put a slight angle just to increase the glue in area, that's all. It's not really doing much. Um, so now that one can go on there. And then I'll put them together like this. Line them up by eye on that straight line. And then the other thing I could do actually is get a steel rule. Lay the steel rule across here. And then put them up against that. In fact, I could put the steel rule like that. Put them up against there. Push them together. And I know everything's nice and square. And then take my Tamiya Extra Thin, or Super Setting, Super Quick Setting Extra Thin. Dab that in there. Put two drops in there. By God, this stuff stinks. That's plenty in there. And then I'm pushing down, just gently pushing down, pulling back against the rule. And making sure everything's nice and square. <clears throat> Give that 10 or 20 seconds. And uh, I will just take this opportunity to say, if you like what you see in here, if you like my approach towards it all, then please like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Um, I am actually doing this sort of online build log of this kit as I go. Um, here's one of the engine bearers here. Or this is the part actually behind the engine bearer. The bulkhead goes on here and the engine bearer goes in front. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I am sort of doing build logs with bits and pieces and I'm also doing some modifications. And I will, as you see here, also do corrections. <clears throat> but I'd also like to say that I'm not trying to tell anybody how to do anything. I'm just showing you the way I do it. And if somebody who's, say, fairly new to the hobby, who's crazy about Lancasters and just bought this kit, they might well be thinking, ooh, I want to get that right. Um, my granddad worked on the tail planes and he was regularly underneath them servicing them. So I want to make sure this bit's right, say. So, um, yeah, so this is just how to do it. You can see it's quite simple. And if you haven't got any two millimeter strip, um, as long as it's the same, you could use any size strip for doing this because as long as they're both held at the same height and away from those pins, um, then, then fine. Um, and, but you also need to make sure that these pins here are off the deck. So either they need to, it needs to be two millimeters or more. So if you've only got some, I mean, you could use, you could probably get away with using five, four pencils of the same diameter. As long as it's all, keep, all you're trying to do is keep everything parallel this way and straight this way. So there we go. Whoops, so Daisy, I moved that then. So uh, I'll leave that to go off now and then I'll be back. Okay, so the glue's dried up now. Um, so now we need to look at actually getting these apart. So it's it's been about half an hour, 40 minutes since my last video, or since the last clip. And you can see here that the, the parts are glued together, fairly firm and all good. So um, if you're an experienced modeler, just fast forward until you see me start cutting. If not, I'm gonna go through quickly through different saws. This is your common sort of saw you get in a, like if you get a Swan Morton knife set in one of those lovely presentation boxes. This really is not suitable for this. It's too aggressive. You can see the blade is, is very thick. Um, so not really any good. This is the trumpeter saw, um, commonly available. This is okay for this kind of thing. It's a bit bit aggressive. You do get some finer blades, I think, but I can't find mine. But um, yeah, quite handy for getting in because it's um, you know it's a longer blade. 
and then you can also get these unfortunately this one is all a bit bent up these are made by rb productions and i've got a few here and you can get all the different um, types uh, and they go in a you know as you see they go in a standard exacto knife handle um and then you get these kind of saws you know like this so this one's actually for scribing and, and filing uh, there's another type of saw that goes in a holder Here you can see some small little saws that are in um you know small lengths ignore these prices i've had these quite a long time um so yeah all sorts of different ones available there which are all really handy um they're really good if you're if you wanted to get in here and cut say this square out you can draw the middle and then use the saw to cut into the corners which none of the others are any good for but by all by my over, overall favorite is this one this is the JLC um, saw. It's available from a company called Model Tools, or Modeling Tools, should I say. This company here, get it from those guys, or Little Cars. Um, they're awesome. You'll see me, I use this a lot, and then when the blades are broken, they're really handy for other stuff. If you look on my Lancaster cockpit mods, you'll see I use broken blades to cut parts out. So, um, let's just get this light a bit better for you here. So what I'm going to do now is, without putting any load on this part at all, because I want to keep all the load off of that glue joint, I'm going to hold this side, and then with the coarse, we've got a coarse side and a fine side, they're both really fine. Um, I'm just going to go in, now I'm not going to go right up against, I'm not sure why you can see this, I'm not going to go right up against the side here, because I want to leave a little bit of the stub sticking out, only about half a millimetre or something. So I'm just laying off there, and then I'm just going to gently, with the saw, just cut this off. Now one of the good things about HK, their plastic is fairly hard, so which means it's quite nice to cut. Uh, it doesn't get all grabby and everything. And there you go, that's, that's it. So now we've got, that one's got a peg on. And you will see that the peg will match perfectly. Sorry, that's the wrong. It will go in here perfectly, just like, oops just like that okay so that's that one done so now I've already glued the back in in there um, so I'm now going to do the same thing here but you can see the problem I've got now is that's going to butt up against there so I need to cut this out and if you remember I said I've left a little bit of a stub on there what I'm going to do take a magic marker permanent not a, not a washable one or a wipeable one, a dry wipe should I say Magic marker on there, a couple of seconds to dry, and then just very lightly sand over the exposed stub. Okay, so now I've got the exposed stub defined in there. So I'm going to take a, let's get this one out of the way. I'm going to take a pin prick, make a hole in the centre of there, which is done. I've got a drill here, which is two and a half millimetres. I'm going to drill through there. So that's drilled most of that out. And now with my snips, I can come along and cut the top of that off. Just take that down flat. And now using a knife or a file or whatever, I can cut this away until the grey plastic disappears. And just leaves me with a with black so I don't see any gray there at all and then I know that I've removed all of the stub so I'll just cut most of it out there like so so that's most of that gone and then I'll take a round file and just get in here and clean that out. I'll do this off camera because it's not easy for me to do in front of the camera. And there we go. That's all done now. So what I've basically done there, if you can see, I've cleaned out the plastic so that you haven't got any grey left. No lip, no flange, no nothing. So all I can do then is just take my sanding stick and gently rub away what you want to avoid, you know, any black magic marker on your model at all, because when you paint it, it will so it will come through. So if you write 
Lancaster down there in black magic marker when you paint it it'll come through prime it it'll come through put your top coat on it'll come through you will have Lancaster there forever um, so here we go we can do this test for now oh I cut that lug out of the way as well because it serves no purpose um, sorry this is, that's the wrong side it's this one isn't it nope it's Nope. So it's that one. So you can see now that's in there and that's fitted absolutely fine. So now this one is going to get cut off and glued into there. Okay, so that was uh, what I was trying to achieve. So you can see that one there. You've got this one here attached to this side, this one here we've just glued to this side and you can see the fit is identical, you wouldn't know which is which if it wasn't for the end. Alright, so all we've got to do now is clear the bench, put this one down here, make sure everything's clear so we haven't got any rubbish in the way. This one down here, put this one down here, push them together like so. Get our straight edge on the back. So now I know they're down and level. So what I can do now is just put some glue in there. Make sure it's butted up to that backstop. Ooh, backstop, I said that word. And if you're watching this in a year's time or something, today is the 19th of January, Saturday 19th of January. So um, yeah, backstop, all about us leaving the Euro, or leaving the European Union, and all the fights and arguments are all about the backstop. Right, same as before, this is all dried up now, so I'm going to get my saw, holding on to this side, so as not to put any strain on the glue joint, and then just going to cut this away, nice and gently. As I say, this HK plastic is lovely for cutting because it's uh, it's hard, it doesn't go all gooey and stick to the blade and everything. So there we go, that's that done. We've got, still got this one to correct as I showed you before. And I believe it's these halves going together. So we've got a bottom and a top. And then they're going to go together just like that. And then you've got your, your two halves. And once I remove that lug from that one, those two will go together. So we've got a top and a bottom, top and a bottom on both of them. And I'm not going to chance putting that in a fuselage, just we'll, we'll go on, if it comes out, it comes out. But this is basically the correct one. Now this is actually the wrong side I've got here. So this is the port side. But just to show you, because they're both the same, of course now we've lost our guide pins to hold it all together but that's going to go in there just like that okay so there we go all right so don't be too scared of doing that little job um it's not that difficult and uh you'll learn a lot from it i know you're you might have spent 400 pound on your lancaster and it's a shame that hk got it wrong but, you know, there's a few things wrong, so not to worry. Um, but yeah, it's, not, it's nothing nothing too, but it's not the end of the world. So uh, get yourself a saw. Get yourself, I mean, you could actually do that with a knife. Or, of course, the other way you could do it, if you don't have a saw and you don't have the tools, you could perhaps cut it with a hot knife, get a, a hot blade and just slice through it. Just make sure you don't touch the surface. Um, right, so that's all sanded out now together. 
but we had sanded out so now they fit together lovely as you can see there so that's the half that um, I've cut out the uh, parts from and this is the half I've added the parts to so now you can see we've got them fitting together lovely now the one thing you must do is remove the pins and the bosses easy enough to do just go around with your snips they don't have to be completely flush you just need to make sure they're not going to foul on the opposite half um, that little bit there may just need a quick rub with a sand and stick but don't go too mad and then the parts will just fit together and slide upon each other like that and just to show you how well it fits this is actually the wrong side but um this is actually the, the, the it's the port side this is actually the right fuselage the right fuselage half for this pair I've got the bottom marks here but I'm not going to chance um, wedging that in there they are quite a good fit but just to give you an idea um, it does all fit lovely that goes in there like that and there you go that's held in there with pressure and you can see what a great job HK have done with the with the fit um, although like I say that is upside down it should be oh go on I'll do it for you it should be this way around that they go in like that so there's the bottom there's the top and you can see the fit is is lovely good enough actually for just to push fit and there's the lug stayed in there all right so thanks for watching that if you've enjoyed this then um please like and subscribe because uh you know there's lots of stuff like this on my channel um, I don't profess to be an expert I'm just an ordinary guy just like you but I do have a, a many years experience I've been modeling for 49 years and um, and I've I'm, I'm an engineer I'm Rolls-Royce trained and everything so I have a sort of a, 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 a pretty good way of looking at things and getting the job done so um, yeah as I say I'm not trying to tell anybody how to do anything I'm just showing you how I do it and certain people will say I would have done it that way I'll do it this way that's fine you carry on um, I, I'm, like I say each to their own there's more than one way to skin a cat as they say but uh, to the beginner the newer guy um, I just want to show you you know there's a problem with your model this is how to get around it so if you've got any issues with kits or whatever feel free to ask me questions in the comments and if i can put a how-to video up i will so thanks for watching bye bye